Welcome back to another episode of Curious Mike. I am here with the one and only Nikola Jokic, my boy. My boy. <laughs> Appreciate you getting on, my guy. <laughs> of course. All right, so I kind of uh, want to start with some basketball stuff, then we'll move to some, you know, off the court. So obviously you're a two-time MVP. You know, we won the championship last year. Um, and one thing I've always been impressed with is how you continue to get better and better and better as years go by. How do you stay motivated now that you have achieved so much at so young? Uh, that's actually a nice question. I think, I think the motivation is actually becomes your lifestyle of being obsessed with the success. Uh, I think winning is a lifestyle mm -hmm. for us right now. I, I'm thinking about the team right now. Uh, like, I think like we can win every game. And yeah. I think it's like winning is kind of lifestyle and you're obs getting obsessed with uh, winning and that lifestyle. It's really... We have fun when, when it's winning and like yeah, we, have we fun talked about that yesterday. Yeah, like yeah. and when we lose, it's like it's like no way. <laughs> yeah, we don't feel right. We've won so much now that we just don't feel right losing. I, I think I think that's the like I think that's probably my motivation. Just like obsess of winning and that kind of lifestyle. I agree. Yeah. Um, one thing I don't know if you remember this. My I think it was my rookie year, or maybe it was my second year. And I asked you, I texted you the question. I was like, "How do you deal with pressure?" Because you um, and everyone kind of notices this is about you in the in the clutch moments. You know, at the end of the games, you always are just like this. No matter what is happening, you you always perform under pressure, and you never seem rattled. So I remember I asked you about that because that was something I just really admired about you. And your answer was was. Uh, I don't know if it's the same now, but your answer then was like, I feel the fear, I feel the pressure, but I just accept it and I deal with mm -hmm. it and I just go do what I need to do. And I prepare, and you said you prepare so when the moments come, you don't feel mm -hmm. like you haven't prepared. Is that kind of the same? How it's actually the same because I think if, uh, if you're not scared, if you're not uh, pressured, if you don't feel uh, nervous, I think you're not, you, you, you didn't choose the right sport. And I think that's a normal thing. In, uh, and you must have that i think you just i think you the most important thing is to like i said prepare prepare yourself for that moment mm -hmm. okay it's gonna you you think in your head okay this play a crowd we are playing home away we were losing or we were winning so you need to like i put scenarios in my head like what can okay this play what can happen here so i'm a kind of you already s live that in my head you mm -hmm. know so when happen on the floor, of course, sometimes it's different, but kind of that makes you prepare for whatever whatever happens. And I think, uh, but just 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 uh, from the beginning, like pressure and fear, like even now, I, I think of every game, like I have a pressure, I have a fear. You know, the guys, the guy on the opposing team is gonna beat me. Yeah. Like I think. Uh, I think you must have that, or maybe I'm just di different thinking, you know? No, I agree. I just think you carry yourself in such a way that no one would be able to tell on the outside that you, you know, you carry pressure because you just seem so, you know, nonchalant and non-caring and mm -hmm. it lets you play so free. How much uh, time do you think you actually prepare? Is it like when you step foot in the arena, now your mind is on basketball or um, is this something, you know, that you carry with you even at home or like do you separate the two? Uh, I think you... The like my game starts this night tonight, you know, mm -hmm. and ends up after I stretch or after I like you know we, we are lifting together after so yeah like my game doesn't end when the it's zero on the clock my game ends like when I'm stretching or when I'm driving home that's when my game ends yeah you know, your so. whole yeah routine no, but uh, it's it's not like I'm I'm obsessed with my routine but uh, I'm kind of trying to not make a big deal of my routine but still kind of doing it you know yeah i don't want to say if i don't lift or something's gonna happen you know no i like i'm gonna do it and it's i'm trying to kind of cruise through my uh routine, right and know? it's not like uh people sometimes have superstitions yeah it's not like a, if i cross the line or if i like i need to make five in a row like i don't have that like sometimes i mean i'm shooting in a warm-up if i miss I just go to the next spot and like it's not something right. that I'm like I need to do this you know so I think I think uh, that helps me to maybe alleviate the pressure like because pressure is the game the uh, routine or warm-up doesn't need to be pressure you know yeah this is part of your yeah, life yeah but my game starts probably tonight uh, like 
even now you kind of start taking okay like you you had max truce or you whoever is your next opponent tomorrow like uh -huh, this is what he's gonna do uh, uh, run off not run off the shooting not shooting dribble like whatever he's a good in a, in a pocket for me he's a good post up player uh, he, i need to box him out like you need to that's how i'm you don't need to but i'm that's that's how i'm thinking like slowly Kind build of prepare, a, to build the actual up, game. Yeah, preparing myself to the game, and uh, I love to be prepared. That helps. Maybe actually, that helps me with the pressure too. Like being prepared for the game. Like you know, I'm 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 really good at reading the plays and like knowing what they're gonna run, and that kind of helps me with the pressure. Because you like, just you know, okay, I know what's gonna happen. You know, it's yeah, this it's dude easy. will call out. <laughs> Call out plays that <laughs> we didn't even go through and walk through or anything. He, he against the Clippers, you remember? I yeah, Mike standing here, right here. <laughs> Bro, I was like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> I remember that. But man, as far as routine, that was one of my questions because early on in in my career, um, your routine wasn't the same as it is now. You mm -hmm. know, I remember you were way more. I don't know if it wasn't that you didn't care about basketball as much, but it just seemed like you didn't. You just were good, but it didn't seem like you cared as much. You didn't put as much effort into your body. You didn't... Um, oh, yeah. The beginning of my career was... Not, um, you know, I was just... I came here just to make it, let's say like that, you know. I, I came here as a third, fourth option, five, fifth option in, in some, uh, some... So I was just kind of trying to play and to... And I, I was young. You don't know nothing about it, you know. Yeah. Like you think he's just a basketball. It's basketball is probably like a twenty percent of the everything else. It's right. like basketball is. I'm, I'm gonna say for me right now, basketball is easy. Yeah. You know, basketball is something that uh, you know you're gonna get tired. You know, you miss make some nights good, some nights bad. But uh, uh, I think when you learn your routine, like even first. I'm gonna say for those three years, like you starting to learn more and more and more, and then then when your routine is kind of I'm gonna say like my third or fourth year, I was kind of okay. I need to do this. I need to change diet. I need to lose weight. I need to. Or maybe I can shoot. Maybe I can like you. Just develop it. As develop time goes. develop it through the time. You know. Yeah. Um, for people that don't know you. You're such a normal and like humble guy. You like to have fun. You like to do normal things. You know, you're not um, someone who really wants to be famous. That was never your goal in being great. So, what would you say is the the hardest part about being like a global superstar? Like um, the pros and the cons of really just being famous. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, I really don't like this life uh, because uh, on the end of the day, we are just basketball players. You know, so we are just good at what we are doing, uh, but. Uh, media is something that uh, is around us and of course we're getting paid for because of the media because of popularity you know so uh, but uh, being famous I think some people like it uh, some people don't I really when I finish my career I really wish nobody knows me uh, and I will wish my kid or kids in the future who knows uh, really remember me as a dad not as a basketball player you know yeah. I think that's gonna I'm gonna say that's gonna be my goal in life, uh, and uh, to not have to not have phone. I think that's another another big goal of mine. Um, just to be to live in the in the in the moment, like you said, like a, being a normal person, like living in the moment. Like go drink with your buddy, or go yeah. have lunch, or go play with the kids, or go drive horses, and nobody's gonna make a big deal of that. Like I feel now. Like if, even if you go some, uh, uh, if you go outside and do little, anything, throw up something tra you know, in, next to the trash can. Oh, Mike didn't throw this in the trash. Like it's yeah. people are making a big deal of such a small things, and uh, and uh, just feel sad when uh, whenever you go to the bar, restaurant, uh, some game, people are just taking the phones and out and uh, trying to record you. I think that's really I'm gonna say rude. Yeah. yeah. It's it's because it's your life. I'm not. No, it's not that I'm showing myself. I'm just. Yeah, you're I'm living your life. You know. Yeah, you're someone who keeps your private life very private. Like I remember when you did get married. Like I don't even think anybody really knew about. <laughs> like, yeah. Um. So when it comes to that, how did you how did you meet your wife, man? How did oh. you how did you know that she was the one? 
so we met. I know her since I was uh, 14, 15. And oh, so yeah, she's from. Yeah, Oklahoma. she she okay. lives five five little. She lived five minutes away from my house, uh, from my home, and we are uh, we were friends for like couple, couple, a couple of years, and then um, she actually came here. Uh, the the summer that she was supposed to, when she came here. That summer that before that, uh, we kind of started. I'm gonna say dating, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, she was playing volleyball in a, in, 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 in Oklahoma, and uh, we were kind of having a long distance relationship. So, uh, how I knew it, it, to be honest, I didn't knew it, but you know, it just happened yeah. to be. And I think, uh, to be honest, everything in my life, I never, I, I never like expected it. Just go, told my life go like slowly, like a uphill slowly. Like, yeah, I never had like some to knock on the wood. Like, I never had the sun like a. Big drop, big drops, you know. So it's like slowly, slowly uphill. Yeah. When you talk about that, um, like when you first got in the NBA and you realized, like, okay, I can play with these guys, and then you you got on the court. You know, I think Nurkic might have been ahead of you at that mm -hmm. time. Um, you say like you, it, everything just happened to you. Did you realize when you first started playing how good you could be, or was it something that? You just kept working, you kept your routine, and you just got better. And you, or was it something when you first got on the court? You're like, I think I could be the best player in the league. <laughs> I think that's impossible. But uh, I think, like maybe one from the questions from earlier, motivation is that uh, kind of don't relax. You know, yeah. if you relax, if you start thinking about that, I think you're just gonna like, okay, I'm good. You're gonna you're gonna stop doing what you're doing. You know. Yes, but uh, when I came here, I, I I was the fifth option. There was like JJ Hickson, Kenneth, uh, Joffrey, and Nurk, and they were all in front of me. And uh, then one year, me and Nurk started to play together. That didn't work well. And uh, I mean, uh, I asked to go to the bench uh, just because it, the team was we didn't we didn't win a lot of games, and uh, maybe just you know to give myself a chance or you know to play a position that I supposed to play of whatever. So and since this and then a couple of months after that, I was starting. I was in the starting unit and like I said, it's uphill it's slowly, slowly, slowly uphill the whole, the whole, the whole life. I'm gonna say. I think that's crazy. Um, this is another conversation we had. Uh, well, actually, backtrack. I want to ask you this because this is a conversation that, that kids in America always have. You know, even NBA players in America. I don't know if it's the same in Serbia. We always talk about who's the best players. Yeah. And the big conversation on social media is, you know, who's the best players in the league, who's top five. But no one ever hears from, you know, I think right now probably you are the undisputed best player in the world. Um, so excluding yourself, <laughs> who would you say is you think it right now in the league is is top five? Right now in the league? Right now in the league. <sighs> It's tough. There's a lot of talent in the league right now. I think there is a like, like I think there is a lot of a lot of talent. Uh, I think uh, I'm gonna say Joel, Luca. Uh, I mean, you gotta you gotta put KD and LeBron there. So yeah. even even they're a little bit older, but I think still can, they can still perform. Uh, you still got like Steph. You still got Steph. You know, I think it's so. The talent, like the talent, and then you have a Tatum and Giannis. The, uh, Gian, you know, it's you can't really say. I think five. it's uh, really impossible to say. I think maybe maybe you like more some other player more than some other play like his game or whatever. But uh, I think it's really hard to 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 put that top five or even top ten. To be honest, I think it's yeah. Any <laughs> given night, guys can kind of float in and out of there. Yeah. I agree. One thing that makes our team so special is your ability to be able to figure out defenses. So if they double, you know, from here, we mm -hmm. always talk about it in walkthroughs. This is what we're doing. Or if they double from somewhere else, this is what we're doing. So one of the reasons we won a championship was your ability and our ability mm -hmm. as a team to kind of figure out different team strategies. And we pretty much have have come up with a plan for every strategy. We had we had answers for everything. Yeah. yeah. Who who do you think then like gave what gives you you personally the biggest challenge like defensively uh i think uh 
uh, when uh, uh, that that was the bubble, right? When they had like a, they had three, four big guys. Oh yeah, the Lakers, AD, yeah, Dwight. they had like a AD, uh, Dwell. Uh, oh yeah, that was tough. You know because it's they could put a big guy on you, but they have another big yeah, guy. Yeah, that that kind of it's like uh, what Minnesota did us. You know yeah. they, they when they put Towns and, and uh, uh, Rudy was like kind of behind him. I think those kind of situations that. Uh, but I think like my games, uh, game, whatever style, whatever it is, it's so like I don't need just post up. Like I can play pick and roll. I can set pick and roll. Like yes. I can come off the screens. You know, I can just play in the like in an open area. Like I, yeah. I think it's not just one thing that uh, uh, I'm doing on the floor. I agree, man. So outside of basketball, because everyone knows you for a great basketball player, but. You know, we're not going to be doing this our whole lives. We probably got, you know, mm. 10 years five, top. Five, 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 years. five probably no, for you. No, no, five, ten. I don't know. <laughs> sure. um, where do you see yourself, I'm going to say, 15, 20 years from now? We, we've had the conversation before mm. how, you know, your one of your goals is to not have a phone. Mm. You want to live like a normal person. Can you do that in Serbia? Or where do you, where do you see yourself in how you live in 15 years? I think after... Uh, after the career is over, I think the old kind of publicity is gonna gone, and I think I'm gonna figure it out. And but how I want to see myself is to be around the family, uh, spending days. Probably my kid, kid right now, one kid, but who knows? Um, maybe they're gonna say play some sport. Maybe they're gonna do something interesting. Follow them a little bit, and uh, spend the rest of the day with the horses. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a couple of horses outside of Serbia, in Italy, in uh, Sweden, in uh, France. Go, maybe, maybe race. Uh, actually, that's kind of my secret goal to be a driver, like to have fun, you know, uh, travel the world or Europe and race horses. Mm -hmm. That sounds fun. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good life. Mm -hmm. I'm the same way. We actually have a team who's not really big into the, the you know, the fame thing. Like, there's a lot of guys that aren't really big I into so social too. media. And I think that kind of is what. What makes us all enjoy each other none of us is trying to like so i think that's cool besides um that i think my last question for you would be what is your purpose you think like besides inspiring kids through basketball i don't know if that's mm -hmm. what your purpose is mm -hmm. but you know you got a family now what is your purpose and why do you kind of feel like you're here like why do you think god mm -hmm. gave you these talents uh when uh, if you remember when uh we won the championship they put uh, like a video of the people uh, like oh, celebrating at their homes. Yeah, I get the goosebumps. Crazy. Uh, like we affect so many people mm -hmm. just by playing basketball. Mm -hmm. So I think it's make people happy. You know, make other people happy. I think that's supposed to be our goal. Like that. When I realized when we won a championship, that I was like, for me, it's like okay. I, I felt it more relief than uh, joy. If that makes any sense. Uh, and. Uh, when I saw the video, I was like, oh, we yeah. affect so many people, like old, young kids, parents, like it's, it was uh, like, this is a big thing, you know, yeah. and by the end of the day, we are just playing basketball, so just I think, I think that's why we are on this planet Earth to make other people happy. Well, I think that's what makes you special, bro, is like mm -hmm. your ability to be like selfless, like it, it shows up in all areas of your life, the fact that you know, on the court, how selfless you are, but also that you feel like your purpose is to make other people happy. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that even though you hate media, you know, I, I hit you and I was like, bro, would you hop on this podcast? And you're like, yeah, bro, anytime, where, yeah, whenever you want. Like, I think that's something, another thing I admire about you. So I just appreciate you getting on. Of course, but I'm not going to lie. The, mo the best questions since I came to the NBA. For real. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Appreciate you, dog. <laughs> My boy, I Thank appreciate you. you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Appreciate Carry his mic out. Yeah. Man, Nikola Jokic. Um, that dude is a is a one of a kind dude. I could truly say that. You know, he's someone who he doesn't he doesn't like media. He doesn't like media at all. You know, so for me to hit him up and for him to just be so uh just hop on here, you know, just without even questioning what it was, what I'm doing. He just was like, yeah, brother, anytime, any place. It shows just the type of person he is. You know, at the end when he talked about um, 
his purpose and like how he truly just wants to inspire people and make people happy. Um, it really shows who he is. He's a really low key dude who never has been for the fame, never has been for his own, his own glory. He gets kind of almost like a little shy almost, or a little kind of like deflective when, um, people are constantly awarding him or, you know, even when coach brings up his stats in the locker room, he's almost like deflective of it, trying to, trying to praise other people and things like that. Um, so over the years in my career, like playing with Nicola has made me, you know, obviously a better, a better player. You know, he gets me so many open looks, but a better person as well, more disciplined. Um, I think more, um, definitely with the routine and stuff he's definitely observing him and how he operates day to day has definitely helped me but also the way he thinks you know how he is after a good game how he is after a bad game um just seeing his balance in life you know he's become a, a good friend of mine over the years and I never would have thought that my first couple of years just because we're so different um I didn't understand his jokes he didn't really understand my culture and how, how me and my friends joke around. So, but now it's crazy to see him kind of open up and, and, and just his personality has evolved and he's joking around just like us. And he's one to, to go out and go to dinners and, and do the things that, that we do. So it's been really enjoyable playing with, uh, with Joker. Um, what's another thing he talked about? I think just the not wanting to be on social media he talked about one of his goals as you know when he's done playing not wanting to even have a phone this is something that we've talked about as well um, we've had a lot of little conversations over the years where we're just chopping it up i'll ask him questions what he thinks about stuff because i just see how different he is and he said you know one of his goals is to not even have a phone when he's done i think that that is very admirable just because of the day and age we live in you know people I don't know if it's an American thing, um, but people are so thirsty these days for clout, for attention, for one-upping other people, for you know self-glory and being the man. And that's one person. If there's anybody that I know that has the ability and the right to self-promote and show off that they're the man, is Nicola. You know, he is back-to-back -back MVP, Finals MVP, World Champion. You know. And he keeps getting better every year. He probably could be the MVP like every year of his career until he's done just because of the way he um, he fills up the stat sheet, what he does for our team. You know, as long as we keep our core together, we're going to win a lot of games. So it's very realistic that he could be in the MVP conversation for the next five, six, seven years. So if there's anybody who could self-promote, it's him. But he chooses not to. He chooses not to have an Instagram. He chooses to keep his private life very private. He chooses not to do the media. Um, and I just think that that is like, that's a special characteristic and it's something that not only me, but a lot of people can learn from because he has it all. You know, he is who he is, but he chooses to humble himself, to live his life, to, you know, make other people happy, inspire other people. Um, and who knows? I don't know if it's an American thing, but we are just so absorbed in our in ourself, you know, in our own brand, pushing our own brand, uh, worried about ourselves. That that's something that I think we can learn from Nicola and just this episode and what he was talking about, um, man. And then he talked about you know his wife and how he uh, how he got married, how he knew it was the one or whatever. And that's weird because everyone I know in the NBA who's married, it's like someone from their childhood. Or someone who they grew up with, their their childhood sweetheart. And so I didn't know that he knew her his whole life, but it makes sense. Um, so he got a good one, you know. He got the he got the kid. We I've been over to his house, and he lives just a very chill, quiet, normal life um, with his kid and his girl, and you know his brothers are around. So I got to make it out to Serbia. Ag went out there this past summer. So I'm going to go mess with Joker um, this, probably this upcoming summer and go see what the horses are about and, uh, yeah, go from there because, you know, there's a lot to learn from that dude. Um, and it's not even the fact that he's so profoundly, like, outwardly wise. It's just the fact of how he lives his life is different. And that's what I think that is unique. And that's something that, that, that people could do more of, you know, conforming to the normal way of life 
you don't need to do that. You can follow your own heart. And I think that takes some inward, you know, getting to know yourself for me lately has been journaling, figuring out what I really want in life, who I really want to be, what I really want to do, what my, what my motives are, you know, what my purpose is. It takes some inward kind of like work, I would say, because there's always going to be pressures from the outside that tell you who to be, how to act, um, all these things. But I think he knows himself and that's why he comes off so authentic because he's not trying to put on a front for anyone. He's not trying to um, live like anybody else. He, he just knows himself and he's unashamedly himself. Um, and I think that that is another quality that that is rare these days. He talked about our team, you know, and, and, and what the toughest matchups were for us and things like that. And we didn't really give away the blueprint because we found how to work our way around this. You know, the Wolves got us earlier this year by putting Cat on Yoke, and then they had Rudy roaming. Um, there's been some other teams who have done who have done similar things, which I mean, it is it is a good uh, it's a good formula. And I think the the Timberwolves are really really good this year, so they they smacked us at their crib, you know. But that's nothing new for us. I would say some other teams have tried that where they put a put a guy on on Yoke, and then they have another bigger guy kind of roaming. Um, but man, so much of our success as a team has been because that dude can just, he's a wizard on the court. He, he figures stuff out and then he'll talk to us, you know, and, and we figured, you know, just playing with him, we figured out ways to figure stuff out on our own too. Um, but yeah, that is one of the reasons we won the championship because every team that we played in our championship run tried different strategies. You know, if that didn't work, they're switching to something else. Um, so yeah, he he his IQ is his greatest attribute. His best skill, I would say, is his touch. You know, he doesn't miss those floaters, those layups around the rim. But his best attribute is his IQ and his ability to to work around different defensive schemes that are thrown at us. And we got a squad. Um, we really do. You know, our core of me, Jamal, AG, KCP. Big fella, and you know the rest of our core of guys off the bench, CB, P. Watt. Um, who am I missing? Really, we just got a we got a squad. You know, Julian is a rookie who who is is really really good. He's not getting a lot of minutes right now, but he'll he'll blossom. We got a squad, so I'm excited. It's crazy because I got drafted to Denver, but so I've never really experienced being on another team. But from the stories that I hear of guys that have been traded to us we have a different culture you know and I wouldn't really know that firsthand because I haven't seen these other teams but everyone says like man like the way y'all operate the way you the way you play the way you even act in the locker room how y'all like enjoy each other's time off the court is different we really got a team who enjoys being around each other and like I said man Joker has not always been someone that I can like really kick it with. Like he really wasn't. I think we probably just found each other a little weird, you know, which is normal. I think people coming from, so he would just, he would stick to his, his guys from overseas, you know, um, Vladko and, and some of the, some of the strength trainers. But over the years, he's, he's really become my boy and we'll, we'll do stuff, um, as a team, you know, when we were in San Diego, um, for training camp, we went down to Tijuana, almost got stuck over there one year because he didn't even bring his ID. So we almost got stuck in Mexico and it was a whole, it was a whole, uh, ordeal. But we just had fun. We, uh, went to this little spot as a team, kicked it, probably came back way too late. I think we crossed the border back into America, at like 4.35 AM. Um, but we have a lot of stories now as a team. It's cool that I've gotten to, to be here my whole career and I haven't been traded around. That's pretty rare. So um man I couldn't ask for for a better dude to share the court with um and yeah man I, I, I forgot to ask him about his brothers I want to ask him I should have asked him about his brothers because his brothers are some crazy dudes you know they'll be at the games and like if we get into the slightest scuffle they're standing up in their chairs they're ready to go you know, uh, they're definitely ready to go whoop somebody. Like his brothers are, had got his back, um, and I see them all around. There's some, there's some unique dudes. They're a lot different than Yoke. Like they carry themselves a lot different. But you know, you can't play with Yoke because his brothers got his back, and that's kind of how me and my brothers are. Like we all got each other's back. So it's cool to see that he's really just a family guy at heart, man. He's a, 
He's just a, he's a low key, chill, funny family guy at heart who happens to be really good at basketball. He never thinks about the end goal of anything. He never, I don't think he ever thought about getting MVP. He never cared about getting MVP. He never thought about winning a championship. He just followed the steps in front of him and he was present in the moment and these things happened to be. He talked about in the interview about like slowly, you know, he just went up, 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 up. And it's, I think it's because he never was thinking about the goals in mind. Um, we have a saying in the weight room habits not goals i think in america we have this notion of you have to set these far out goals and these things will make you happy um but you know from my experience and something i've learned over time is it's the process and it's the habits you build and the person you become that eventually allow you to reach your goals if you just have this goal in mind and you're striving and stressing to get it like sometimes it will elude you because it causes you to be stressed out, anxious, and you really miss out on a big piece of life, which is the process, becoming who you need to be um, in the process. And that's something that our team as a whole kind of preaches is habits, not goals. We're not worried about winning a championship right now. We're worried about building the habits that will allow us to eventually win enough games to eventually win a championship. And that's something that I think, yeah, over here we miss. You know, we think that the certain goal or this thing or that thing will make us happy and then we get it and it's ha it makes us happy for a week or two, if that, and then you have a new goal and you're not happy until you reach that goal. Yeah, I don't think that's the right way to live. Um, but for some reason, you know, the American dream, that's the whole, that's the whole point of it is to like become somebody and do these big things, but you miss out on 99.9% .9 of life because these goals that you may reach are like, they're just a thing that happens to you. You know, I, I from firsthand experience, I thought all growing up, you know, my goal was to reach the NBA and boom, I got it. Now I'm in the NBA. Now I'm not playing and I really want to play. And I'm like, man, if I could just get on the court, I'd be happy. I start getting a little bit of time that, that fulfilled me for a second, but not really. Then I'm like, man, I gotta be a starter. I gotta, you know, work hard enough to be a starter became a starter on the team and then you know that's cool but now you have bigger goals you want to be an all-star you want to this you want to that so over the time of playing with joker and seeing how those things don't even cross his mind is something that i've been able to adapt you know and just self-reflection as well you see you know people out in the world that have these goals and then they they're they're not happy at the end of them so it's been a process for me but that's something that i think i've grown in as well so, man, habits, not goals. That's just the whole motto. It's something he lives by. That's something I've learned to live by. And it keeps you at peace through the hard times. And it makes you look at failures as learning lessons. And not, not um, they're not failures. They're really learning lessons if you allow them to be. And you can build yourself through the failures, sometimes even more than the success. So, yeah, man, this episode is a special one, obviously. Uh, I'm glad the Joker got on. Y'all got to see a little bit of his personality, how goofy he is off the court. Um, so, yeah, man, Kiri's mic out. Appreciate y'all listening to it.